Hi there. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create a Text Mesh Pro object via script. Here we have a simple scene with a camera, directional light, and two simple game objects. Now, these two game objects have a basic script attached to them uh, with one public field that allows us to define if we're going to create a Text Mesh Pro object or a Text Mesh object. Let's, uh, we only have the top one active, so let's hit play and see what's going on. So as you can see, a Text Mesh Pro object was created. Uh, it's got some text, underline, colors, and a counter. Let's hit pause and let's go take a look at our object. We can see that a Text Mesh Pro component was added. We can see that a Mesh Renderer was added, as well as a Mesh Filter. And then we have a font that was picked and a bunch of things. So let's see uh, the script itself to see what's required in order to create this. So if we go to our script, we can see that it's a simple mono behavior. Here's our public field. We have two private fields to hold a reference to the text mesh pro object or the text mesh object. Uh, we have two string labels, I guess, being defined. Uh, the reason why we have two is the uh, rich text markup that text mesh pro uses, since we have uh, more options like uh, superscript, subscript, underline, and so on and so forth. Uh, the, the way we define them is slightly different, but it's also because I'm kind of lazy. In the case of color, uh, for text mesh, it's color equal you know, yellow or blue, or color equal some hexadecimal uh, color code. Uh, in the case of Text Mesh Pro, as I said, I was kind of lazy. I didn't feel like having to type color equals something all the time, so I basically just use the hexadecimal code. So you can still go color equal yellow, color equal blue, and there's a couple presets defined, but you can just type the hexadecimal code. But anyway, let's move on. So here we have our start function. Uh, I made it a coroutine just so we can control the frequency at which the frames update. Um, in this start function, We've got basically if the, the type is zero, it's a text mesh pro object, all we do is we basically to this game object, we add a component of type text mesh pro and that's it. So let's go back to our uh, scene. Let me pause it or stop it and play again and hit pause. And what we see here is, is the, when you add a text mesh pro component, it automatically adds the additional components that it needs. Uh, it automatically, if you don't specify a font, it picks the Arial SDF font. It picks a font size of 36, left justification, and top left anchor. And that's it. Now let's go and make some changes to this to just take a look at it a little bit more in depth. So what we're going to do is uh, say, well, I'd like this font to be of the font size 48, and I'd like to change my anchor position to center. Now let's take a look here and add a text mesh object alongside the other one. So in order to create a text mesh object, uh, we add a component of type text mesh to the object. You do have to specify, specify what font you want to load, and you do have to basically assign the material from that font to the renderer of that object. We're also going to specify 48, and we'll say uh, middle center justification or anchor which is the same as for the text mesh project. I'm going to save this, go back, stop this. I'm going to uh, enable or make active the text mesh object. We're going to hit play and take a look at both. So as you can see here we have a text mesh pro object at the top with a uh, center anchor position and then we have a text mesh object with a center uh, middle center anchor position here. We can see uh, font size is 48 and for text mesh pro font size is 48. So they both look the same, looks cool, right? Now, um, although text mesh pro can use a bitmap font, um, if we look here, we've assigned Arial SDF. SDF stands for sign distance field. Why do we do that? Well, sign distance field fonts, unlike bitmaps, as you zoom in or zoom out, they always remain super clean at any uh, size on screen. So whereas with the bitmap, if I zoom in, it you know doesn't look so hot anymore, but the sign distance field one looks super cool. If I zoom out, even small, you know, the bitmap eventually looks nicer when it's smaller, but so does the text mesh pro object. Here you can see there's a text mesh pro frame counter that just popped up. But don't worry about it. So if we keep going, um, these are the two objects. Now I'm going to show you something interesting. Now if I hit play, um, you can see that the width of the characters from one to the other, right? A zero and a one is not as wide. Um, although we have a center anchor position, 
you can see that the center is not being adjusted every time the character changes. So a uh, funny story is when I built TextMesh Pro and I was comparing with TextMesh, TextMesh like this was super stable, right? But TextMesh Pro was bouncing left and right because as the character width changes, the width of the entire object changes and then it kept readjusting the center position. And I noticed that Unity's text mesh wasn't doing that. So I thought, well, maybe I ought to go and take a look and add some kind of dampening. So basically what I do with text mesh pro is I take a look at the change of width of the object. And if the change is greater than 40% of the width of the character W, or maybe I'm using underline, I can't remember. But if the width changes by more than 40%, then we'll adjust it. If it changes by less than that, then we won't adjust it. The end result is regardless of the font you pick and the width, it's always stable even if the anchor is center or right and so on and so forth. Now the irony is if I stop this and go back to our text, is let's change the text mesh pro object and let's make it uh, be a different font. We'll go for impact SDF. Um, let's go to the Unity text mesh object and let's also make that one the impact font and let's just save this. Now if we go back the irony is that I guess when Unity built their dampening or whatever I guess maybe somebody forgot to consider that the width of the font might change. So as you can see here they're bouncing left and right and we're actually stable which is kind of cool. So anyway I kind of digress there but we're gonna move along. So now what I'm gonna do is just pause this and just talk about uh, sign distance field a little bit to show you a few more options. So as you can see, we have our impact font here selected. Well, what if I wanted to change this? One of the advantage and beauty of sign distance field is this font will look great at any size. So if I shrink it, make it super small or super big, it will always look super nice, okay? Which is nice. But if I go here and I open up my shader panel, if I want, I can actually add a border in real time to this font. So here, as you can see, I can add a border. And as I move the sliders, because I'm paused right now, obviously it's having to update you know, every time I make a change. So, but you can see I'm adding a border in real time here. Now, with a normal bitmap font, you can't really easily do that. You could go back to Photoshop and do a bunch of stuff, but then you're gonna end up creating a bunch of font atlases. With sign distance field, one atlas, and you can get literally an unlimited number of, of looks for that single font. As a matter of fact, let me put it back to its normal. Um, I could go here and pick different fonts. Like right now we have Arial SDF. Well, actually we have Impact, but what about Arial? Well, what about Snap It? What about this other weird font, which suddenly took like a weird look? But let's go back to Impact. What if for this Impact font, we wanted a, a different look? Like you can, uh, I added a contextual menu, so now you can duplicate materials easily, you can copy material properties, paste them, or reset them. Well, that allows you to basically, you have a custom font asset for uh, TextMesh Pro, which holds the font definition uh, and the font atlas, and these materials here hold a reference to some of these things. What does it allow us to do? Well, I can take this outline impact and put it there, so now we instantly have an outline on it. Um, I can say impact shadow. So this one creates like a fake shadow object. As a matter of fact, let me show you that. Uh, let's go back to our, well, just for fun, I could go back by dragging it or I can go back and pick, let's say, a different font. That's just for fun. Take this object, control D to make a duplicate. Let's pick the duplicate. Let's add the shadow object to it. So I'll drag it to the mesh renderer right there. And now, Actually, I have the, the shadow selected. As you can see, I can readjust it, like create a fake shadow for fun. Right, now we have our fake shadow. Take this top object and give it like a different look, like drag a plastic look to it. And now our shadow, they're both sitting on top of each other. So let's open our transform and just move the shadow behind a little bit. So now as you can see, we dramatically changed the look of this font that we're using with TextMesh Pro, although we never touched the font atlas. All these visual changes from texturing to the highlight and the bevel, and I could add a glow, all these changes are dynamic. I've never touched that font asset in any shape or form. 
So let's stop this and see how we could create that font via script. Well, all I have to do is pick that same SDF plastic bevel that we had, and that's it. Hit save, go back, and now we've got it. So now you can actually define presets for your material for every single font type that you're using. So that's basically it for this, uh, this video. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to let me know. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, thanks for watching.